How are we doing folks? Well it's time once again to have another crack at this car and to try and uh, get the engine running again. So now I've got all the service items, let's give the engine a thorough service and get it back to rights. Let's see how we get on. Okay, so we're going to start by draining the oil out of it because uh, we can leave the oil draining while we're doing everything else on the engine. Now, um, number one is make sure you're wearing gloves because uh, nasty old engine oil is not good stuff to get in your hands. Uh, it can be carcinogenic and it's got all sorts of other nasties in it, so don't get it on you. Um, what you need is you need a 10mm uh, uh, socket um, and ratchet and there is a plate on the bottom of the engine which you... Uh, uh, slacken off the uh, the nuts on and um, start letting the oil drain out into a pan which you put underneath. So let's have a look underneath and you'll, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so here we are looking at the bottom of the engine in the centre of the crankcase and this is the plate here I'm talking about. And you can see the ring of 10mm um, nuts that are going around the outside of it. So what you want to do is you want to sl slacken them off, uh, take say four of them out and leave two of them in loosely and uh, have your drip tray underneath uh, so that um, the oil that starts spilling out from around that some place is going to go into the um, go into the drip tray. There should be about three and a half litres of oil in the engine, any more than that would be too much actually. Um, and then once we have all the oil drained we can actually take that plate off altogether and remove the strainer. But let's get the oil draining first of all. Okay so start by um, literally just uh, slackening them um, say a quarter turn each. They shouldn't be stitched because it's going into a magnesium. So um, the crankcase is a magnesium aluminium alloy, and so the metal is quite soft and easily damaged. So we're going to so we're going to undo these, and we're going to uh, let the oil start draining. You can see it's already started dripping, which is why I have my drip tray underneath. So work them around and now what we can do is we can start uh, start taking them out by hand. Now you'll see why I'm wearing gloves because this is a nasty old job on a beetle to be honest with you. It's uh, In their infinite wisdom they, uh, see there's the nut there, it's kind of a capped nut. Um, in, in their infinite wisdom they didn't put a drain plug in the bottom. Now you'll find some beetles do actually have a little drain plug on the um, on the uh, sump plate and uh, it makes it a lot easier. My beetle for example does, it actually takes the form of the temp oil temperature sender. Now you see the stud has come out with this one here, right? So because the stud has come out, the oil is actually going to start pouring out of there. So uh, that's alright, we'll put that away. Um, and we start working on, our, on the rest of them. They are all finger tight now. And um, oil, as I said, is going to pour everywhere. So I'll come back to you now in a second. Okay, so there's the oil pouring out there now all around the sump plate into my catch can. And um, yeah, so we're going to leave that doing that for a while anyway and get as much of it out as we can before we take that plate off because um, taking it off now is going to make a horrendous mess. Okay, so the eagle-eyed amongst you will have noticed that the, um, the distributor is actually being removed. Now, um, in order to do the points on these, I think it's easier just to remove the distributor rather than to try and do them in situ. The simple reason is, is because it's actually quite easy to remove the distributor in a beetle. What you do is, uh, you make sure that this nut here is uh, stays tight, okay, do not loosen that nut, okay, because otherwise you're going to upset your timing. And you will see at the um, the front of the car, essentially, for the engine, the uh, you have another nut, uh, coming, uh, a stud coming out of the um, crankcase with a nut on the top of it that holds this in place, okay. Now, before you remove that, what you do is ro rotate the engine to... Um, number one cylinder top dead centre, okay, on the firing stroke. Um, and the way you know you're at that position is tr through two methods. One is that the rotor arm will be pointing to the HT lead for number one cylinder. Number one cylinder on a Beetle engine is at the front of the car uh, on the right hand side. And uh, it's basically in there. So you follow your HT lead around. I've taken the HT leads and everything off this car because I'm going to be replacing them as well too. Um, follow your HT lead around and then you line up your timing mark here, okay? So you see that notch on the inside of the flywheel? That's top dead center, okay? So um, turn, the, turn the pulley until you get to that point there. And then you loosen off that nut there, take it off, and then literally just pull the distributor out. And um, then that means that basically what you can do is you can give your uh, give your distributor a good inspection, make sure that everything is 100% on that front. Because part of servicing is inspecting and making sure that everything is the way it's supposed to be. And that's the bit that's often overlooked. Okay, so looking at the distributor here, first of all what we need to do is we need to um, take a rotor arm off, okay? So that just pops off like that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take our points out, okay? So the points are held in by a um, screw down there 
and then we can pop off our uh, little spade terminal here as well too and then they're literally just slipped onto a shaft here okay so let's pop out that screw okay now the points are out okay so that's that now if uh, at your 3,000 mile service, uh, what you would want to do really is just inspect them and make sure that the gap is properly uh, is the way it's supposed to be. Now I'm going to show you how to check the gap when we put the new points in. But um, at the kind of 6,000 mile service, you want to be changing them. Okay, they they have a finite life. Personally, I like to install electronic ignition kits in cars because I know people say, "Oh, it's another point of failure." Every modern car has an electronic ignition nowadays, you know, or or much more complex electronics than that even. So, yeah, you could argue that that fact, but if you go and buy a decent quality one, there's no reason why it should be a, a particularly prone point of failure. Now, I'm going to take the condenser off as well because we have another condenser, so that's this screw on the side, okay? So we take that screw out, put that aside, and that allows us to remove all of this carry-on here too. So we put that put them aside and we will go and get our new um our new points okay so um the next thing you need to do is now with the distributor um uh, with the, the points removed and the distributor disassembled like this and um, there is a little felt pad on the inside of the shaft here okay now that felt pad needs to be impregnated with a little bit of oil okay and um, you uh, you could use uh, engine oil in this instance and it's absolutely fine so uh, fresh engine oil obviously um, if you're trying to use dirty engine oil for doing a job like this just walk away from the car please you know anyway right so that's that done and um, we have our uh, Everything is lubricated nicely there as well too, and um, we have our new parts over here. So what I have is, I have a new condenser, new points, new rotor arm, and new cap. Okay, so we're going to fit all of them. So uh, let's start by uh, putting in our uh, our condenser. There's a part on this uh, on the old one that needs to be taken off as well too, you'll see this um, little retaining bracket. So we'll actually keep this. We we'll slip the uh, slip the new uh, slip this in there like that. Okay, so that, that goes there. And then we bring our you do have to wonder sometimes, I mean Right. What we can do is we'll just use the, use the screw hole. But see, that's that's intended to um, hold the uh, the wire in place. Okay. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to cut this piece off here, and I'm going to uh, put the um, put the new condenser on like that, and I'm just going to double up on it, and then we can we can bring our wire through, and then at least we have the thing to hold the wire in place. Okay, so I did exactly what I said I was going to do. Um, so we now have the little uh, retainer for the uh, wire that goes inside the distributor, which the points pick up onto, which lines up with the screw hole, and then the condenser can go through that same screw hole here on this side, and we can, uh, can screw that into place now. So uh, let's do that. Anyway, there you go. So that's, that's fine now. Now, you can try and kind of use the sides of the distributor to sort of hold the wire in place, but it's, a, it's bodge. It's not the way to do it at all. So, anyway, that's uh, that's done. So now we have that wire. That wire will go off to the coil. Okay, we have new fresh wires there, new fresh condenser. So next thing we do is we put our new points in. So our new points are the ones over here, and um, what happens here is they go in like this. There's a little wire that needs to go on the top. That wire out of the way. Now, the shaft here, I uh, actually, it doesn't, the points don't pull up off the shaft, I'm confusing it for another car. <laughs> uh, that little spud there goes down into the hole down there, uh, down here, and that locates one side of them. So, you can feel there now, well, I can feel it, that uh, that's in place. And um, what we do now is we put our screw through the, the little ring terminal 
I don't think every one of these distributors actually has that little ring terminal to tell you the truth. But uh, in this instance it does, so we'll uh, we'll use it. Okay, so now you can see that the um, uh, the points are in. Uh, I've pushed uh, any wiring that would be in the way of the movement of the points I've, uh, I've pushed off to the side. So that's um, that's over there now, and uh, this one comes around the top. So the points are the, the points are in need of adjustment now. Okay, so how we adjust the points is we basically we rotate it so rotate the distributor so that if you look at the the crests here, I'll turn on the light on the camera. There we go. And then I'll proceed to knock the camera over. You'll see there's a basically a cam on the inside. You'll, you'll have to uh, excuse the noise in the background there. It's a, it's a working yard that we're in here. Um, so uh, we're on the height of the, the crest now. So what we need to do is we need to be able to move the um, we need to move the, the actual the fixed part away from them to increase the gap or closer to, closer to them to decrease the gap. Okay, so the points gap you want is 16th how or 0.4 millimeters. The way you adjust that basically is you put the feeler blade in between the two points in here, slacken off the screw altogether in there that actually holds the points down. Now what will happen is the spring will act, uh, the spring will act on the, um, will allow the points to pull together towards the feeler blades, but your uh, your spring is still um, it's still in position, or er, did it's still on the top of the cam lobe, and then we'll just tighten it up with the feeler blade still in between. And you just basically, uh, and then that's basically it. So just make sure that what you do is you keep your feeler blade um, square with the actual points. So I'm not 100% happy with that, so I'm just going to do it again. Sometimes a little bit of trial and error is what's needed here. Okay, we're spot on there now, right? So that's uh, that's our 16 thou uh, points gap set, right? I'll just nip up the screw, just make sure it's 100% tight. And uh, that's a good job, it's a good one. So now you can see as you rotate the uh, Rotate the shaft. You've got um, your points are uh, opening and closing nicely. So um, there you go. So that's uh, that's them fully open now on the top of the uh, crest there of the um, lobe. And feel the blade fits in lovely. Okay, so that's your points done, right? So um, new set of points in that distributor. So we're going to pop a, pop a new rotor arm now in. Um, you'll see this little uh, notch inside the rotor arm that goes into the notch in the shaft. And you will find that number one cylinder top dead center is around there. So um, that would be uh, you're basically the, the points are facing the back of the car and the uh, vacuum can will be off to your left. So that's your rough measurement, but you'll get it closer then when you pop it back in with the um, with the uh, bracket there. But um, obviously we're going to need to adjust our timing in the future. So we'll get to that at a little at a later stage. So um, let's uh, let's put that all back together again. Okay, so uh, you'll see I uh, blanked off um, where the distributor actually goes. So just pull it out gently. Make sure you don't get any of the dirt in around it and take off the uh, nut that you would have put back on there just for safekeeping and um, then we will put our uh, distributor back in. Now um, the distributor drive gear, uh, the dog down the bottom, uh, has got a little spring in it but if you look down in the hole you will see um, what orientation it's at anyway and that shouldn't have moved uh, from when you pulled the distributor out. So uh, what we'll do is we'll pop our distributor in, roughly getting it Getting the drive dog roughly lined up with where it's supposed to be. So, remember I told you, the vacuum can is around to your left. The dr the rotor arm should be around there, and it roughly goes in like so. Now you might need to just give it a little bit of a wiggle uh, on the shaft. And that doesn't get caught, and that's in. Not quite. Got a little bit to go.
There we go. So that's in now. And we know the timing should be within the ballpark. I know I'm going to, ch I did say I'm going to check it and I do mean that. Now what we can do is we can actually connect up our points to the uh, distributor. Um, so they, uh, the points actually connect to the negative side. The way the, the points basically work is what they do is they essentially um, lift the negative from the coil which basically sends a high voltage pulse from the primary windings to the secondary windings and then, the, uh, then down through to the spark plug. So uh, uh, that's what your points are actually doing. So distributor is in. Pop our nut back on on the back of it. And we can nip that up. So that's tight now, right? So that distributor is now in and home. So what we can do now is we can uh, change our spark plugs. So uh, changing a spark plug in a Beetle is an absolute pain in the face. And the simple reason is because of the fact that they're uh, located in an arseways angle. And the aluminium heads are prone to uh, having the threads stripped out of them. So I'm going to show you a trick for that now. Okay, so if the sockets, uh, sorry, if the spark plugs you have in the car are the correct ones, which they should be, uh, you will need a 21 millimeter socket in order to remove them um, and a, a short uh, extension on your ratchet. So um, there's, there's one in, in the front of the uh, uh, intake manifold here. So this is actually number two cylinder we're doing first. Now, I know I say this is a pain in the face. It's not too bad if you have a single carburetor right in the middle and it's not blocking. My car has twin carbs, so the carb is right here. And uh, it's, uh, the spark plugs at the front of the car are entirely inaccessible and it is an absolute nightmare. What I've actually done is um, drilled holes in the inner wings to allow me to get at the spark plugs to change them. Okay, there's one spark plug looking very, very sorry for itself. Right, so that's, uh, that's the, four the four old plugs out. Um, you'll see they actually have got the little collars on them anyway, so uh, sometimes you do, you do get them, sometimes you don't, depending on the HT leads you use. Um, so in this instance, I've new HT leads, so we have to have a look and see if they're the ones that actually fit. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to take one of the old HT leads and we're going to cut the end off it, and I'll show you the reason why now in a second. Now here's a nice new set of spark plugs, and um, what we're going to do basically is we're going to use the, this is the, uh, the off cut of the end of the old um, HT lead, and we're going to actually click that on, and we're going to be able to use that to thread the spark plug into the head by hand, okay? Because that way then you'll feel if the um, if the threads are picking up in, uh, at all on it. So um, it, it just basically makes life a little bit easier for you. Incidentally, that uh, that HT lead would have been causing the engine to lose cooling air around the spark plug because it doesn't have the boot on it that stops the um, cooling air from coming out around it. Uh, you'll see on some of the other HT leads, there is uh, boots on them, okay? And those boots basically, uh, they keep the cooling air where it's supposed to be going. And it's important in a Beetle engine. It's part of the cooling system. You know, it's amazing how people think it's appropriate to, to leave the cooling, uh, leave parts of the cooling system off on a, uh, on a Beetle, but they don't do it in any other car. Now, um, what we need to do next is we need to gap the spark plugs, okay? Because the electrode gap is important and um, needs to be set. So it gets set from 25 to 28, uh, point, uh, 25 to 28 tau, or uh, in um, uh, if you're if you're using the metric system, 0.6 to 0.7 millimeters. Okay, so uh, let's get our feeler blade, and uh, we'll get that set up. Okay, so I have uh, 26 tau feeler blades here, uh, 20 tau and a 6 tau and um, that, uh, that spark plug gap is fine now. So, um, once you keep the feeler blade flat against the electrode, you feel there's a nice little drag there. So that's one done, right? So we have another three to do, and then um, they're ready to fit then. So uh, it is important to do this, because, you know, it's part of the, part of the tuning tune up process for, this, uh, for these engines. So this one here is a fresh one just out of the box. Now you can see now the um, feeler blades won't go in. You can just, just about pry them with the feeler blade and just get it in there. So it's literally, it, it doesn't require a huge amount of pressure just to bend, it bend them back a little bit just to get them in. And then that's that one done. Right, so that's number two. Okay, so 
Um, now we can start putting the, the new spark plugs in. Now remember I told you about putting the uh, putting the uh, spark plug um, HT lead end on. That just allows me to just easily thread the spark plug in. I can feel it's going in there now. Okay, so there's the four spark plugs in. We just need to tighten them up now. Okay, so let's get the uh, let's get the HT leads replaced now. So you'll see that the um, the old HT leads are a bit you know a bit of a mismatch but conveniently number one is actually the yellow one and that was uh, so that was that's going to make life easy for us anyway so the way it works basically is you go clockwise around from number one so it's one four three two one four three two one four three two one just remember it is it's basically four three two one but uh, the firing order is generally written on the generator pedestal on a beetle anyway so um what we'll do is before we put the distributor cap on we'll actually put the um we will put the new HT leads in, uh, plug them onto the spark plugs. So cylinder one is the front on the right. So um, what we'll do is we'll pop that in, first of all. Are these the leads? Oh yeah. Typical. And these are the leads that you need, the, uh, you need to remove the collar for, whereas the ones I actually had I kind of get the collars loose. Oh, I think I'm going to have to remove those spark plugs to get the collars off. I should have checked that first. Okay, so I managed to get the two, uh, two of the four collars, uh, collars off without having to take the spark plugs out. Funnily enough, the ones at the back actually, or, well, the front of the car, whereas the ones at the, uh, the back of the car, I just couldn't get, uh, get anything in onto them to, to get them loose because, they've, because of the curve of the uh, in a wing here so anyway right that's that done so anyway let's uh, let's get, let's keep moving so i have one of the ht leads routed correctly and you'll see the way it goes is basically in behind the uh, intake manifold under the um generator and over to the uh, uh to the distributor so that's number one right so number two is basically the same situation um so we'll start doing we'll start actually plugging them into the distributor cap now. So I have the old distributor cap, I'm changing the distributor cap as well too. So I have the old one, so I know where number one is in relation to that. So we'll put number one in relation to, in the same uh, orientation. So number one should be, we're just basically lining them up here like this, you can see. Um, so that's uh, the same, same. So that's number one there, right? So number one is the only one we really need to know where it is to start with, okay? So pop number one in there. Make sure that the boot is pushed fully home. Okay, we won't worry about doing number two just yet. I think actually um, the HT, like, HT lead I used on number two was actually still the wrong one, so because it's still too short. So take that out, and there's one that's actually longer again. We'll try that one. Get the boot pushed home. Root that in there. There should be little um, little clips to hold the HTs in place, but uh, this uh, vehicle is not equipped with them. Um, so remember our firing order, so that'd be one, four, three, two. So two is actually on that one there. So that's that, right? So now, I'm gonna actually clip that on now. I'm gonna get our other two leads on. Okay, those of you who were paying attention down the back will remember that there is um, a plate on the bottom of the engine and, they, uh, and I removed four of the six nuts. So now it's a case of replacing, removing the other two, okay? And this is where it gets really messy and horrible, okay? You would have thought it would be already messy and horrible, but now it gets worse. So, some plate is now free to come off. And there's one of the gaskets, I have new gaskets. And then basically you should be able to pull out the oil strainer. Now it can be a bit of a faff, so what we'll do is we'll just get something just to pry that out and um, then uh, we'll be able to give that a clean with, in a bit of uh, petrol. You could use carb cleaner or something like that. I actually meant to bring a can of it with me and I again forgot that as well too. Everything to do with carb I forgot about. 
Okay, so here's the uh, here's the, the strainer plate and here's the strainer itself, okay? Now, um, it got a little bit warped when I took it out, but we can straighten that out anyway, it's, it's not a problem. Um, it's, it's only a very light metal, so um, take the other gasket off. The other side is a gasket that goes on both sides of it. And what I want to do here is I want to have a look and see, there's some fairly, fairly significant clumps of gack on the inside of this. It's like rubber or something like that, though. It's not metal. So, I'm wondering, that's the type of thing now, what that would tell me was somebody actually went and tried to replace the um, the oil pump pedestal and broke off a lump of it and it went down into the crankcase. So it wouldn't be an unusual thing to happen and they kind of just left it there. So um, what we'll do is we'll give that a clean off anyway and uh, clean out our strainer as well too and see how that's looking. And then we will um, we'll refit everything um, with fresh oil and... Um, I will recommend to the um, the owner that uh, it gets serviced again in the not too distant future because just to flush any of that nastiness out. Okay, so here's the uh, oil strainer as uh, clean as I could kind of get it in the uh, circumstances, and um, there's new uh, crush washers to go underneath the heads of the uh, nuts, and um, these lads here don't get used because they are um, they'd be for if you had a a plug in the centre of the. Um, uh, strainer plate which we don't and we also have two of these as well too so what I like to do is I like to actually give these a little smear of oil before I put them on and that's enough just to help them seal you don't need to go putting sealant on these okay it doesn't call up for them VW didn't do it so we're not going to do it okay and um, you see people going mental with feckin blue or TV and Hylomar and all this sort of stuff as well too and <laughs> that's only going one place if it squeezes out inside the engine and that's into the engine so you know y you can find yourself very quickly blocking oil passages and stuff like that as well too so we're not doing that okay Okay, little smear of a uh, little smear of 20W50 engine oil, which is what we're using in this engine, and uh, we're going to put them in. So uh, one goes before the strainer plate, and one goes after the strainer plate under this. So um, uh, I'll show you that now in a second. Obviously, the other thing we need to do is we need to clean up there as well too. So I'm just going to get a rag and give that a little bit of a wipe as well too. I'll just get a petrol soaked rag and um, wipe it all down, and uh, that'll give us as good a chance as possible just to get everything sealing properly. Okay, so there's the strainer plate in there with the gasket in behind it, okay, so uh, the next thing we need to do is we need to get our, um, uh, well, sorry, that's the strainer in, we need to put the strainer plate on now, so what we do is we put the, uh, these are actually soaked with a little bit of oil, okay, so we just pop the, um, pop that in place, okay, uh, as I said, you don't need to go too mad putting oil on it, just a little smear is all it needs to have, it needs to have, um, so we'll put that on now and we put our strainer plate in place, Hel hold it on just with two nuts while we get ourselves sorted out and then we can get everything else in place. Okay, so now one of the things that always happens with these bloody things is people stitch them in, okay, you do not need to stitch them, okay, literally just a nip is all you want to go, okay, so... Just, see the way I'm just using my two finger, two, two or three fingers on the back of the uh, ratchet there just to Pull them up, okay? If you stitch them, you'll end up warping the plate and then you won't get a seal. Now, that to me is tight enough, okay? So I'm going to just go around them just one more time, just give them the same amount of pressure again, make sure I got them all, and then we're going to put three and a half litres of 20W50 mineral oil into this engine, okay? 20W50 mineral oil, that's what we're putting into it, okay, and that's what you should be using in your beetle. There's all sorts of debates about other types of oils and stuff like that as well too, but um, this is the stuff that I'm going to be using, okay, so uh, I'm not getting into one of those debates. You could use 15W40 in that as well too, but again, there I am trying to get into the debate, I'm not going to do it, okay. That's what we're putting in this car, so it'll be happy enough with it. What possessed VW to put the filler on the side rather than the, f the back of the engine is... I, I will never understand it. Just doesn't seem to make sense because, you know, you end up having to use one of these little uh, jugs that I'm going to be using here to, to put oil in, and it's just awkward. Now, we'll put this first liter in, and we'll have a look underneath and make sure it's not spilling out all over the ground. Okay, so uh, that's the. Um, that's the oil added. It, it actually did take three and a half litres in the end. I was right. So uh, I shouldn't have doubted myself. Bang on the mark. Bang on the full mark there now. So um, the eagle eye, amongst you may have noticed that we don't have an alternator belt, belt fit. So let's rectify that situation now. I have a new alternator belt for it. Okay, so the way the tensioning basically works on this um, 
this pulley is. You can't move the alternator, okay, because it's got the fan on the back of it, which is in the fan shroud, and that has to stay the way it is. So what we have instead is we have a split pulley, and we have shims to go between it. And depending on how many shims you use in between it, makes the belt ride higher or lower because it's basically it's a V groove and if you space the two further apart the belt will sit, sit lower in the groove okay and if you put the if, if you use less shims so less shims actually means you have a tighter belt and um, so um, what we'll do is we'll actually try the number of shims there that uh, uh, that, that were in the uh, were in the car when we used the old belt I don't I don't think for a minute that that would be the right number but it's a good starting point and the, the spare shims are kept basically underneath this little um, this little lad here. So these shims aren't actually doing anything, they're basically spare. And uh, the ones that are in between the two halves of the pulley, they're the ones that are doing something. Yeah, it's a little tight, but I think that'll be okay. So uh, I'll use an impact gun to tighten it now. One of the other things I suggest you do as part of the service is actually uh, give the battery a charge because um, normal use on a battery um, isn't really enough to get it up to a full charge. So while you're doing all your oil changing and all that as well too, stick it on, uh, put it on a charger and uh, just leave it be. Now um, that battery looks pretty crusty but I'm going to just see if it comes back to life. Um, I cleaned up the terminals on it and uh, I'm giving it a, a good uh, deep cycle charge there now anyway so maybe it might just do the job. Okay, so here's another uh, another job which is a bit of a faff on a Beetle because of the fact that it's under the car and in, any, uh, in practically every other car it's on the top uh, as far as classic cars go and that is uh, doing the valves and um, so we need to do it, we need to adjust the tappets um, and adjusting the tappets is basically there. there's two uh, two rocker covers, one on either side and uh, you have cylinder one and two on one side and three and four on the other side and um, so what we need to do is we need to uh, get to uh, number one cylinder top dead center first of all and then adjust that valve, uh, the two valves on that cylinder, and then just continue on that way. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is to take your uh, distributor cap off and rotate the engine so it's at number one cylinder top dead center. And the way you know that basically is because the um, the distributor will be, uh, uh, the rotor arm will be pointing at number one um, cylinder and um, the, uh, the points will be open. It'll be in or around top dead center. It doesn't have to be bang on in this instance. But, um, what we can do is just uh, you can kind of rotate the uh, rotate the engine by just using your hands on the pulley and uh, get it around to uh, the distributor rotor arm be around there. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll I'll just do that off camera because it's a bit awkward to do while holding the camera. Okay, so that delight up there is your um, your uh, rocker cover. Okay, as I said, there is two, so uh, they always leak uh, the rocker cover seals. And um, so we have two new seals for it as well too and they will go on to leak as well too, as a standard operating procedure for Beetles, um, but uh, at least we tried, god damn it, at least we did that. So, um, anyway, what you do is you literally um, get a screwdriver and wang this off, okay, that's what it says in the book, you wang that off, all right, and you push it down there, and then the rocker cover comes off, revealing, surprisingly enough, your rockers. Okay, so now number one cylinder is that one there at the front of the car, okay, so you'll see now those those two valves, that one there is too tight, okay, you can tell even just by the feel of it, and that was probably too loose, but what we'll do is we'll get a feeler blade and we'll adjust down to six tau, okay, so there should be a clearance of six tau between the head of the valve and the head of the valve stem and the rocker, uh, the rocker adjuster, and um, so we'll get them all adjusted to six tau. Okay, so obviously we're working in the wheel arch here, basically it's a pain in the face. Um, what you need is, in order to do this job, is a um, 6 tau feeler blade, a 13 mil spanner and a flathead screwdriver. Now that is way too loose there, for example, right? And that is too tight. So what we're going to do is we're going to crack off the two adjusters. Oh, Jesus, why do people stitch them like that? They do not need to be stitched, right? I'll just get a socket just to to undo them. And there we go. Right, so now the thing about it is is that when you're doing this, you'll find that while you're um while you're trying to wind in the adjuster screw, the uh, the nut will want to turn on you and uh, the uh, the other thing as well too that happens is that when you tighten up the nut, 
the um, adjuster will uh, the, the adjuster will also tighten as, as well too a little bit. So you need to allow for that. The stubby screwdriver should do the job nicely. Now, normally you wouldn't have a camera doing this, a uh, camera in front of you doing this. So I'm kind of at a bit of an awkward angle, which is why I'm making this look a bit awkward. But the things I do for you, wonderful YouTube folks. Now, just keep an eye on where the uh, the adjuster is actually there. See that? Um, uh, you can see where the actual screw is. is what, what way the screw head is facing? Right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the screwdriver back on here, and I'm going to just. Nip that up, okay, and we'll see how we're... Yeah, you see that's tightened up now, right, so I'm not happy with that, so I need to just back it off. Now, I'm not talking about a tiny little bit. It's just literally... Probably about that much is all we're talking. Yeah, see, there's that's perfect, right? So, you're looking for a little drag on the... Um, a drag on the, uh, t uh, the, screw the feeler blade. You're not looking for it to be... Um, uh, stuck in there because what's happening there is you're actually pushing the valve down with the feeler blade which is no use to you at all and that's not the intention of this job they're both bang on okay so happy days that's number one uh, number one and two done right so now what we need to do is we need to replace our rocket cover gasket and do number three and four and to be honest with you guys you can figure it out <laughs> just basically rotate the engine three, uh, rotate the engine backwards until you get to number three and then number four. Number three is the front of the car, number four is the back of the car. And um, do the same thing basically. Um, and uh, then that uh, replace, the, uh, replace the seal on the rocker cover. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to replace the seal on the rocker cover. And I'm gonna, we're going to pop that back on. Um, by the way, just uh, to, uh, as a, a shout out, I bought all the parts for this project on um, at vwspares.ie. Okay, so just a bit of a shout out for them there. Um, I didn't uh, get any freebies or anything like that. I didn't ask for any. Um, it's literally just I think he does a good service and he deserves our support. So. Um, um, uh, John White is the owner there. If you need any VW stuff, give VW Spares a visit. It's well worth it. Okay, so let's have a look at the uh, have a look at the um, rocker cover gaskets. So here's your rocker cover gasket. It's one of those annoying cork ones. Okay, and here's our rocker cover with the old one in, which is actually broken. And um, so it's just as well we have a replacement one. Um, it would certainly account for a lot of the oil leakage off this engine. Maybe the push rod tubes aren't leaking at all. Um, so what we'll do is we'll wipe up, wipe up around here um, on the uh, sealing surface. And these uh, these uh, seals, uh, like the, um, the, the strainer uh, gaskets on the sump plate, should be soaked in oil as well too. Now these need a good bit of oil on them, okay? Because otherwise they will not seal. And to be honest with you, they'll never bloody seal anyway. They're a pain in the face. Um, I don't rate them particularly highly, but uh, VW used them for years, so we'll go with VW uh, on this and their superior knowledge of all things air-cooled VW. <laughs> Which is kind of... Now I just have a, as I said, it's just the dregs of the, the can of oil I've been using. I'm just going to pour it on there, I'm going to work it around. Trying to keep oil inside a VW engine is a mystery, you know, I mean, it's a, how you actually do it, isn't it? I never managed to figure it out. You have eight push rod tubes with two seals on each end, so there's 16 seals. You have an oil cooler with four seals, so there's another 20 seals. You've got the, um, oil sling around the back, you've got the, um, uh, you have the uh, crankshaft oil seal on the front and you have the, um, uh, you also have the sump plate as well too, which is also a pain in the ass. So all of those, uh, all those things um, mean that you have plenty of places for oil to leak from and it's basically, basically what it means is it, it gives you a very easy way to check the oil on the beef because if there's no oil under it, there's no oil in it. Now that's the uh, that's what I mean about the, oil, the seal falling off. Now see that. Now don't be don't be inclined to use sealant on this because if you use sealant again, it's going to just end up all over the place. And if you are going to use sealant and go against my my uh, recommendations, which you're very very much entitled to do if you want to, but uh, if you are going to do it, the slightest little smear is all you need. Don't go mad on it.
Okay, so that's on. That's one side done, and then we do the other side, and uh, basically uh, repeat the procedure. Um, Incidentally, before I go as well too, um, I, this is about as much as I'm going to do today because uh, I have to get home um, and uh, look after the little man and do the dinner and family duties, which is fair enough. But um, one of the things I want to show you is um, why my channel is called Enfloat. Okay, what is Enfloat? Enfloat is lateral movement of a crankshaft and uh, beetle engines are particularly prone to it simply because of the fact that they are a magnesium crankcase. And uh, what happens is, especially if you are the type of driver who sits there with your foot in the clutch the whole time, you're putting pressure on the thrust bearing um, in, the crankca in the crankcase using the throw out bearing for the clutch and you end up with what is called Enfloat. Now Enfloat is basically, I suspect this engine is probably going to have loads of it, but um, you grab the point and you, you can move the pulley back and forth slightly. Now, actually, it's not that it's not that bad in this engine at all. I'd, but that clunking, that's end float, and you'll always see it in the Beetle in some in some way, shape, or form. So, uh, yeah, there you go. So, um, anyway, I'm going to press on here and I'm going to tidy up, and uh, I'm going to leave it here for the day. Uh, so basically, we got the servicing done. Um, short of the carburetor being fitted again. Uh, so this is the servicing section. The tune-up section will be the next video. So we, we'll, we'll get this engine running then, give it a tune-up and make sure it's running right. And um, it, but we've, we've, got, we've got the back broken there now anyway. And then what we also need to do is do those fuel lines as well too. So a, a box of bits still, still to be fitted. All from VW Spares, new air filter, uh, air filter housing, this handbrake cables, new fuel pipe, there's your fresh air tubes. Hopefully by the time I'm doing the next video, um, I will have the uh, piece of rear tin that has to go down here as well too. So you can put that in place and um, basically go over the engine and make sure it's actually running right. Um, then once we have that done, we'll have a look at the brakes and we'll see how we're looking there. So um, yeah, look at uh, thanks for watching folks. Don't forget to like and subscribe and um, I'll see you in a future video. Thanks for watching. Oh, by the way, even if you're uh, an experienced uh, person with a uh, VW is, well, experienced enough, uh, like myself. This is always a handy little reference guide. Um, this is the book I've been using just to check everything and check my figures. And if you actually have a look at the back, there's a really handy page there with all of the um, clearances, gaps, all of that sort of stuff as well too. So, um, uh, yeah, I like that book actually. I think it's a handy little uh, guide to have. So um, that's what I've uh, had beside me for the whole, uh, the whole job. Okay, okay, I popped the battery in. Let's just see if we can crank it over at least. Splash petrol all over the place, well, that's a great idea. Anyway, let's uh, see what she does. Probably nothing, but I need to have to try it. That battery isn't worth a shite. Right. Okay, good battery. Round two, let's see what happens. Well, it's cranking anyway, so at least that's something. So let's just pop a bit more petrol down that car. I'd say it's probably dried out what was in it. I'm gonna actually use some petrol with oil in it because give it a little bit of upper cylinder lubrication. A tiny bit, but some nonetheless. Down there. Now let's see what happens. Okay. Well, it definitely started a lot easier anyway. So um, maybe with a good carburetor, this will actually uh, this engine will actually run quite well. Well, at least that's the hope anyway. And the timing can't be that far out of it actually uh, kicked into life so quickly. So next thing we need to do now is we need to refit the carburetor. Uh, that fuel pump is working. I did question it in the previous video, but it does seem to be sp uh, spitting out fuel. Um, and uh, yeah, so refit the car with a new pa base gasket, which I have for it there, a uh, new uh, throttle return spring, all new fuel lines, new fuel filter, fresh fuel. Uh, give it a tune up, set the timing, um, and uh, then set the we need we, we need to kind of dial the carburetor into a point where it'll actually run a bit 
so we can get the timing done. And then once we've got the timing done, then we can, we can kind of dial the carburetor in a little bit better. I have a, an exhaust gas analyzer, which we can actually use for it. Anyway, look, let's leave it there, folks. I'll talk to you soon, okay? Thanks for watching. Everything was going so well until I locked my fucking keys into the bloody van behind me.